Today, we're on part 13 of the Honda VF1000 buggy. So, last video was all about getting the engine running. We finally did that. I think we need to, uh, we need to hook up the gas pedal, we need to install the mufflers, we need to install a radiator fan so we don't overheat this engine, and we also need to install all the wiring to all of the lights and do a little odds and ends here and there, and then hopefully if everything goes according to plan, we're possibly going to do a test drive and see what this thing actually does. Alright, so I'm kind of just really, really want to get this thing working. So this is the radiator off of the GS500 before I rebuilt it and put different radiator fans on it. So this thing's kind of old, it's seen better days, but it works and it kind of barely fits right here. So there we go. Let's just fit right there. There we go. So obviously this is just temporary to just get this thing working because I just want to drive this thing. So this is going to work. It stays on there. We're going to wire it up and uh, should be good. Does it still spin? Oh yeah. Slight rubbing, but it'll be fine. It is so much quieter. Awesome! <laughs> oh, it looks awesome. Alright, so it just wired up. Can you see it? I think you can see it. So, I just wired up the, uh, the rope light, the whip light, whatever people call it. That thing. Check it out. <laughs> and it has an app that you can change different styles of how it works. There's a bunch of different stuff on here. You can do different speed. You can even see, like, on the screen it just looks like blank. Can you see? There you go. 
you can kind of see it moving, but it's a bunch of different. Wait, this thing is cool. This thing is awesome. I kind of like that one. That one's uh, that one's pretty. I'm gonna leave that for now, and then uh, can always change it later. This thing is awesome. Links to this and the lights in the description below. Go check that out. Go buy one of these things. They are worth it. Okay, so yesterday I dragged this thing outside and did the first test drive. We found out that there is a major problem with the sprocket setup. Now, I'm not going to say what that is, but you guys can probably guess what it is. Um, I did film testing it. It's just it was dark. You really couldn't see what I was doing. So um, I'm going to film it again so this time you can see what I'm doing. And you'll see the problem that I'm talking about. Now, I have an idea on how to fix it. It's just I'm not sure if that idea is going to work. I'm not sure if this problem is going to be a complete design failure and cause this thing to be a complete failure. So, um, not sure if I'm going to be able to fix it or not, but uh, let's just drag this thing outside and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This thing barely fits out the door. feel really bad for the clutch. Um, that's the problem. That's the problem. The gearing is not right. Not even close. All right, so something I do want to make clear is this is not the engine's fault. The engine is fine. It's working perfectly. It has enough power to move this thing. It is simply the gearing. Gearing's all wrong. We need to change it. Now, Unfortunately, because of how this is set up, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to do that. Now, this is a 60 tooth sprocket. It's the biggest one I can buy online without having one custom made, and that's kind of pricey. And it's also the biggest one I can fit on here without modifying and without changing a lot of stuff right here to make it fit. So um, I'd rather not change this if I don't have to. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the sprocket on the engine. Now what's on there right now is a 17 tooth sprocket. It's rather large. Yesterday when I found out that this thing needed a gearing change, I bought a bunch of different size sprockets. Um, I bought a, a 16 and a 15 tooth sprocket that will fit on this engine. And I also bought a 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10 tooth sprocket that will work for a 530 chain. Now I bought those just in case the uh, uh, 16 and 15 tooth sprocket won't work because I think it needs a, a really drastic gearing change. So after buying those, I kind of realized they're gonna take a little while to get here. So in the meantime, because I know you guys really want to see this thing test drive, or you guys want to see what this thing does, in the meantime, while we're waiting for those sprockets to get here, I'm gonna take this. This is a a, a 12 tooth sprocket for a, uh, I believe, a 520 chain. Now it's the same uh, tooth size, it's, it's still, uh, still works for a 530 chain, it just simply is thinner than a 530 sprocket, so therefore it just has a bit of play in on the chain. So it still works, but it's not the correct sprocket size, so what we're going to do 
is in the meantime, while we're waiting for those other sprockets to get here, we're gonna take this and we're gonna modify this to fit on that. We're gonna take the 17 tooth, we're gonna turn it down, so therefore this slides on there, I'm gonna weld it onto that, and we're gonna see if this will work. Now, if this doesn't work, I know it's a drastic change to go from a 17 tooth to a 12 tooth sprocket, but what I, I believe that this is what this thing needs. This is how much of a gearing reduction this thing needs to get this to actually work. Now, if this doesn't work, we're gonna have to do some major modifications to this thing to get this thing to actually move without killing the engine. So, uh, let's hope this, that this works. So I was burning the crap out of this. This is probably not gonna work. Uh, let's try this. This is a cutoff wheel for a die grinder. Let's see if this will work. Cause this is actually hardened steel. I thought about softening it, but it's like, I kind of want to keep it hardened. So I'd rather not soften it. So um, let's try this. Let's see if this works. Yeah, let's hope this works, because if this doesn't, I don't know what will.
Yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's test this thing and see if it actually fixed the problem. I'm going to take it to the front yard and just see if it'll make it. smoking a lot which is kind of uh, a little scary test drive this thing and see what this is actually capable of. Now, I will admit, is it as awesome as I was hoping this thing was going to be? Not really, just because uh, the gearing. 
Again, the gearing is still not perfect. It's at least better than what it was the first test. The first test was a kind of a complete failure. Really big disappointment with it just killing the engine every time I tried to accelerate. Uh, now that we did the temporary sprocket change on the engine, now it at least accelerates without killing the engine. It still struggles to accelerate. This thing's definitely not going to do any type of burnouts anytime soon, even in the dirt. But um, once we get it up to speed, then it seems to have you know, more torque, more power, and it seems to be a lot more fun. It's just the initial acceleration is just a little hard on the engine, and it seems to just struggle even on flat ground. When it goes up that hill, it's just, yeah, I gotta bring it up to like four or 5,000 RPM, and it'll just slowly let the clutch out, and it just kinda just really struggles. The engine just struggles and bogs down to just accelerate this thing. Now, that also, you know, also means that this thing is just very heavy. That is partly my bad. I know, I kinda built this thing a little heavy, but that is still just the gearing. We need to play around the gearing some more, see if we can bring it down a lot more and uh, hopefully that will fix the problem. As far as everything else, everything else seemed to be working great. Uh, the steering was working great, the suspension was working great, the coilovers worked great, brakes were working great, um, the engine was working great, The everything seemed to be working, it's just I wish the gearing was a lot better. Now, this thing does drive like a boat, unfortunately. It feels like you're driving a boat, turns like a boat, and that's I think that's just because of how heavy it is and how uh, how big it is. I think I'll just have to get over that that little fact. But um, as far as everything else, it seemed to be working great. Now I'm not really sure when the next video of this project is going to be. I definitely need to work on some other things because we've been working on this for the last <laughs> couple months nonstop. I need to work on something else now. Um, not really sure when the next video of this project is going to be, but it's definitely going to be working on the gearing and then possibly doing some more testing. Definitely want to take this thing somewhere else, therefore I don't tear up my entire yard. I tried to do the best I could with just driving it around my yard. I definitely didn't send it as much as I, you guys probably wanted me to, but it's, again, the first test drive, you always want to take it easy, so therefore if something breaks, you're not going to be flying around a corner and then crash into a vehicle in, in the driveway. So, definitely took it easier in this video. Uh, maybe next video I'll drive it a little bit more and actually get it out of second gear. So, um... Not sure when that's going to be, probably going to be for another uh, couple more weeks, maybe a month, but um, anyway. Now to thank Go Power Sports for sending me the parts I have used for this project, I also have to thank Oxbean for sending me the lights I have put on this thing. I will be leaving links for almost everything you see here in the description below, go check all that out. But I gotta end this video here, thank you all for watching, I'll see ya in the next video.